This episode of John Joe Lions Reviews is sponsored by Wild Eye Releasing. To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lions. What's that like to live delicious? <laughs> On screen. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies? Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos for creative. What's happening? My name is John Joe Lyons, and today I'm here to present to you my review of Devil's Weekend. Written and directed by Cedric Dupu, Devil's Weekend stars! All of these are. A young filmmaker sets out to make the most terrifying horror film of all time. But shooting without money and a cast of only his non-actor friends, the director soon realizes the only way to make the most realistic horror movie is to actually murder his entire cast on camera. This is the footage from that movie. How you doing, you lot? Ready for a nice and healthy dose of murderous narcissism? No, I'm not talking about me. This week I'm back to cover yet another entry in the found footage follow the killer subgenre. And after the last tragedy that was sunk in Danish, what we've got here is pretty damn good. Devil's Weekend takes this type of horror but attempts to elevate it above the usual psycho killer on a rampage by adding the extra dimension of the struggling artist. Not only that, but also unlike sunken Danish, we actually get some good violence in this one eventually. But before we get into all of that, I just want to remind you, you can see this video completely uncut and early at patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons for as little as $2 a month. I'm not going to go on about it, so I'll just say that the Patreon is the way that I pay my rent and make these videos, so if you like them and want to support the content, go over there now. And there's a fundraiser which you can find the link for in the description of this video in the pinned comment. If you're not interested in any of that but still like the content, then please click the like button, ring the bell, click subscribe and comment what your favourite found footage horror movie is. I've got to say August Underground Morden because even now, it's still pretty Probably one of the most f***ed up movies I've ever seen. Crusty for life, yo. But anyway, I'm in the mood to watch one man attempt to make the best horror flick ever, so let's not waste any more time. Get ready to yell cut, then get cut! This is Devil's Weekend. The movie begins with some guts on a bloody floor and opening credits listing Cedric Dupu as writer, producer and director. Cut to this man who sits down and addresses us directly, introducing himself by the same name. The camera then slowly moves around a messy room when the words in memoria pop up along with a list of names. Cedric then tells us this is not an opening sequence, it's merely a Ford then begins to explain a few things about his movie. He says it's not a real movie and that he wanted to direct the best horror flick ever. He's going to show us the dailies, the unedited footage making this more of a making of. I love making of documentaries. That movie me and your mum made was sort of a making of documentary. A making of an abortion. He says he tried to make it as punchy as possible, did some editing, added music, sound effects and a filter to make it look like a real movie. Cedric then finishes his introduction. De mon humble point de vue, uh, c'est un simple et prodigieux moment de cinéma. Bon film. Cut to a lean whinging about the rough day she's had when her partner Cedric surprises her with the camera. We get a title card reading first step, introducing the project, then cut back to him as he tells her he's filming a documentary. He says he needs to record everything because he's doing a movie. She asks if this is the camera he's going to shoot with and he says no, this is the movie. Oh, bien sûr, le film. T'as arrivé quand c'était Jenny? Toujours la même chose, là. T'as as, as pas confiance? C'est incroyable, là. Putain, mais... Attends, ça a rien à voir, mais euh, t'achètes une caméra sur un coup de tête alors qu'on a déjà du mal à payer la taxe d'habitation. Tu... Putain, tu veux quoi Que je saute de joie, peut-être Cedric then shows her the new Mac he bought to edit with, having thrown out her PC. She calls him crazy and asks where he got the money, with Cedric replying online credit. Adeline loses her temper and locks herself in the bathroom when Cedric addresses us, saying she's overwhelmed by the good news and she's always been emotional. Bon, le moment est certainement mal choisi pour lui annoncer que j'ai quitté mon travail. Euh, ouais, je vais me consacrer pleinement à ce projet. Cut to Cedric giving us a tour of his home starting off in the basement which he calls his vault. He tells us Aline never comes down here and it's where he does all of his DIY. Him and Aline bought the house and were supposed to renovate it together but it's just been him. He says when his films make him rich and famous he'll pay some guys to fix it for him while him and Aline travel around the world. En tout cas pas des Roumains, j'ai pas de pare-brise à nettoyer. 
That's a bit weirdly specific, Cedric. Cedric then says he's going to introduce us to his best friend, Matthew, as he's called his team members in for a meeting. Cut to him at a meeting as he thanks everyone for coming and introduces them all. Here we meet Matthew, his wife, Camille, their cataract. Because cataract. And Jonathan. He asks where our nod is and Jonathan says he's not returning his calls. Cedric tells him to try again as he needs him here then moves on to the announcement that they're gonna shoot the best horror movie ever. He then explains the plot. C'est l'histoire d'une bande de potes qui se retrouvent pendant un week-end et l'un d'eux au dernier moment pète les plombs et tue tout le monde. Super original mate. Je suis pas une petite spécialiste de l'horreur mais c'est pas un peu... Quoi C'est pas un peu quoi Euh, shut the f*** up Camille, you've got two purposes and neither one of them is critiquing the movie. Yes, one of them is shitting in my mouth. Jonathan asks if this is why Cedric quit his job and he confirms it is. He then tells him our nod got Cedric's old job which he seems a bit bummed out about. I'm assuming the subtitles randomly stop here but judging by his tone it doesn't sound like he likes our nod messing with his things. Cedric then suggests they read through the script together and after that he'll do some interviews. Cut to Cedric interviewing Arnod. Cedric asks how he reacted when he saw him filming and Arnod says he thought him to be ridiculous. Matthew answering the same question says he was surprised with Camille saying the same. Cedric then asks what they think of the project with Matthew saying nothing, Arnod asking if Cedric wants the truth, Jonathan saying we'll see and Camille advising she prefers comedies. Next they're asked what they think of their characters with Arnod loving it as he's the main part even while having issues with the last scene, Jonathan being being disappointed as he's the first to die and Matthew liking this part as he gets to kill Camille. Arnold says he doesn't want to be compared to Walker Texas Ranger or some hero like that while Cedric asks what they prefer most about the movie. Matthew says killing Camille, Jonathan says that it's his friend's movie and when it's released he'll be able to show off and Camille says it's scary and might scare all the girls. Damn, Matthew really wants to kill Camille doesn't he? I mean I get it, she's a beautiful innocent young woman. The slut. Cut to a title card that reads second step first day of shooting. Here Cedric tells us he's done editing the opening sequence which is great. He then shows us a short clip of his masterpiece. In it we see Matthew woken up by a scream. He goes to the kitchen to grab himself a glass of water when there's a knock at the door. He opens the door and it's Camille who says she forgot her key. She then tells him that Jonathan called and he's back from holiday. Camille suggests inviting him but Matthew shoots it down. She's surprised as he hasn't seen his friend in six months and Matthew says he can't forget some unspoken mishap. Camille then suggests inviting Arnaud and says they'll have fun. Maybe he'll forget about his nightmares. Oui, ça on va bien rigoler. Cut to Cedric as he admits he isn't pleased with the results. He says he's going to talk to them about it tomorrow and we cut to him sitting down for a pixelated smoke. Yeah, that's not me by the way. If it was me, you'd know because it'd be one of these guys. But no, you're going to notice a lot of weird background censoring in this movie. I don't get it. Here Cedric explains there's not enough time in the day to accomplish what he wants so he's decided to skip sleep. To accomplish this he's gonna drink coffee, splash cold water on his face and hurt himself. And now I'm hard. Thanks. Cut to Cedric joining Aline for breakfast. She asks him how it's going and he says he's having trouble with the score. Aline tells him he should ask Arnaud as he's a DJ but Cedric instead says he's gonna ask Raphael. She asks if he's told Arnaud and Cedric kicks off. Cut back to the argument as Aline says Arnaud introduced them and asks why he's jealous. They continue to fight when again we cut to static then a title card that reads third step starting all over. Cut to Cedric in the woods taking a peaceful stroll. He shows us a bench in front of this view then says this is where he kissed Aline for the first time. At least that's what he says before quickly admitting that he met her in a nightclub and she was so drunk she thought he was her ex. C'est la merde. Cut to another cast meeting as Cedric informs them they're gonna have to start again. He singles out Camille for being especially terrible then reminds them he is the director. They are the actors and as actors they have to listen to him. He then tells them to take five and we cut to him outside having a cigarette. C'était parfait. Ouais j'étais parfait. Cut to a montage of Cedric attempting to get the shots he requires and not having much luck. This ends with him fighting with Arnaud about him leaving early and shouting at Matthew. Cut to Cedric moaning at us about how shit his friends are and how if they wanted to succeed they'd need to fight for it. He then shows us more edited footage, this scene telling us the reason for the future slaughter. Cut to the scene as Camille asks Arnaud if he's okay. He says he's nervous and Camille asks what's going on. Arnaud says he can't tell her because of Matthew and she mentions a black car. Arnaud then says Griffin's death was a real shock. 
Mais faut relativiser, ça reste un chat, Griffon. Griffon est irremplaçable pour Mathieu. So the killer's motive in Cedric's movie is that somebody killed his cat. Cut to 99% of my Discord being like, yeah, fair enough. Arnold then says Matthew scared him cutting the chicken, whatever that means. Matthew enters and asks what they're talking about, and Camille says he scared Arnold cutting the chicken like it was a human body. Oh, I see. I thought it was some sort of euphemism, like cutting the cheese or whatever. But also, how do you cut up a chicken like a human body? Is there a specific way to cut up a human body once you're done having sex with it? Matthew plays this off as a joke, then says he's gonna go cut some wood before cutting something else. T'as vu comment il m'a parlé? Il m'a menacé, là, j'en suis sûr. Mais tu te fais des idées, tu vois toujours la petite bête. It's funny that the dialogue in Cedric's film is supposed to be purposefully bad, but actually he's pretty much on the same level as any other film I'd cover for the channel. Cut to Cedric in his vault moaning about Elaine coming home late. He says she better not be with our nod as that would make him angry when he hears her pulling up outside. Cut to the fourth step, everybody is pissing me off. We join Cedric as he finishes showing Elaine his work, which she calls crap, still upset about the money he wasted on it. He blames the actors, but again Elaine is not convinced blaming him instead. <laughs> Enfin, personnellement, je sais pas, mais ton dialogue là, moi je trouve vraiment que c'est de la grosse merde. Now, that... That's pretty f***ing funny. Aline tries to storm off, but Cedric follows her and they fight with the subject quickly turning back to Arnaud. Cedric says he can't stand that he is a director, but Aline says he can't stand his attitude. He screams at her, accusing her of talking to and banging Arnaud, and we cut to Cedric sitting outside a locked bathroom door. He tries to apologize, offering to spend some good time with her when we get this cut. Je rentre, hein? Allez. Oh dear, you've got something on your top there, Cedric. Ketchup, yeah? Ketchup. I'm sure Aline is fine. He calls up Jonathan asking if he's free to have a chat over some drinks and his friend agrees. Cut to the pair heading into the bar. Jonathan asks Cedric what's going on, but he says he doesn't want to talk about it. Jonathan guesses it's Aline and Cedric asks him how he knows. <laughs> Cedric then admits it is about Aline and that they had a fight. Cut to Cedric breaking into the bathroom with a hammer and dragging Aline out by her hair. He damn near then breaks her f***ing hand off. And hits her in the face with the hammer. She then tries to crawl away but Cedric quickly puts a stop to her escape. <laughs> Cut back to the bar as Jonathan asks how it all started with Cedric blaming Arnold. Jonathan asks if he's sure and Cedric says she said it was because of the movie but he knows that was an excuse. It seems Jonathan thinks Cedric broke up with Aline in favour of continuing to make his movie and in a sense I guess he did. Cut to the men with their pixel drinks as Jonathan asks what they're gonna do now. Cedric says he needs to make a few changes and Jonathan asks if he'll cool down. Well, hey, be careful then mate. If I've learned anything from my past relationships it's that all women are liars! And that you should never tell a psychopath to calm down. Good advice. Cut to Cedric and Aline as he pulls her mangled face back into frame, takes off her underwear, spits in his hand and f**ks her dead body. <sighs> Jesus Christ man, maybe having her face beaten in with a hammer isn't exactly a turn on. Me on the other hand though, I'm absolutely sopping right now. I think I'm gonna need to lay a towel down. Oh, oh no wait. No, I've just f**ked myself. There's no retention down there. I've got an arsehole like a hippo's mouth. Jonathan then suggests instead of finishing the film, Cedric used the dailies to do his making of, saying it would be the first of its kind on the big screen. Cedric doesn't seem convinced of the idea, asking Jonathan if he thinks people would be stupid enough to pay 8 euro to see a bunch of idiots in a making of. Well, f Cut to Cedric whinging again into camera about Jonathan suggesting he stop and how people get famous all the time by doing stupid in front of a camera. And on an unrelated note, here's me drinking a jar of Are you 
proud of me, Dad. Do you love me now? Do you? He says he wants to do something to prove what he's capable of. He continues to lose control of himself, saying he trusted his friends and they shits on him. Non, parce que parce que je les emmerde. Voilà, je vais les obliger à tenir leur rôle jusqu'au bout. Je vais les obliger à tenir leur rôle jusqu'au bout. Mais oui, c'est ce que je vais faire. Je vais les obliger. Mais hors de question de me laisser faire. Ils vont voir ce que c'est quand te fout dans la gueule. Oh, f***ing shut up, will you? I'm genuinely at the end of my tether with all this whinging. Just kill your friends and be done with it. Jesus Christ. Cut to Cedric waking up on the sofa in his matching shirt and briefs. He walks over to Aline who, honestly, is still pretty hot and lets us know she's still here. Cut to him putting her body parts in the car and then to our introduction to Raphael, the film's score composer. Cedric explains the plot to Raphael which he calls simple much to Cedric's annoyance. Raphael then shows him his song. Oh, yeah. C'est pas mal. Enfin, t'as fait ça quand enfin... Il y a six mois. Bah, franchement, il euh, y a du fond, quoi. Enfin, le... I don't know. I've heard better. We actually have a deal going where every time I plug disinterested handjobs music, he owes me a suck job. That's three suck jobs you owe me so far, mate, with plenty more on the horizon. He asks for the rights to the song and we cut to step five, first day of shooting without our nod. Cedric asks Camille where the others are and she says in the other room. He goes to check on them when he overhears Jonathan telling Matthew about Cedric's fight with the lean. Matthew then says she asked him to call her but now she isn't answering. Cedric turns to the camera and addresses us saying it's been less than 24 hours and he's in trouble. Cut to Cedric getting ready to shoot a scene with Camille and Jonathan. Jonathan fluffs his line and Cedric immediately kicks off shouting at them both to focus. This leads to the two men getting into an argument and Jonathan storming out. Quand on n'assume pas sa médiocrité, c'est bien connu, on s'énerve. Cut to Cedric looking at the script when he's joined by Matthew. He tries to talk to his friend, asking why he's still doing the movie, but gets the same aggressive response. He then asks Cedric what he wants him to do, and he says they're going to reshoot the first scene again. Cut to them shooting with it all falling apart once again. He tells a laughing Camille to forget it, as they're going to move on to the bathtub scene. A nude scene he only just thought of and Camille never agreed to. Smart guy. Bon là, c'est la scène du bain. Quel bain Bah, ce bain-là. Faut que tu rentres dans l'eau. Mais attends, mais t'es taré, tu m'as jamais dit qu'il fallait que j'aille à, à poil dans un bain Bah, ça c'est normal, je l'ai écrit hier, tu, tu pouvais pas savoir. Camille refuses to do the nudity and tries to leave, but Cedric won't let her, instead saying he only wants to see her shoulders and ass. She nearly knocks the camera out of his hand, so Cedric grabs her by the hair and dunks her in the bath, holding her under until all of the life drains out of her. Laisse rentrer l'eau dans tes poumons Laisse rentrer l'eau dans tes poumons, voilà Laisse rentrer l'eau dans tes poumons ah. Cedric tells us that she was acting like a superstar and what's done is done. It's impossible to go back now. He says this death reminds him of Aline's, but it doesn't have the same drama. He needs to do to Camille what he did to Aline. So he of course f***s her dead body and you can't really blame him, can you? Oh, you can. Oh, but don't worry about what I said then. Just, uh... Just ignore that bit. Oh putain, ça me comprime la bite. Oh putain, oh mais tu as pas du bon coup, il passait pas. Oh non. Cedric next tells us he knows what we're thinking. That she died too quickly, but he has a solution for that. He pops out of the bathroom and asks Matthew if he has any tools in the cellar, and he says he does, telling him not to make a mess. I can't believe that Matthew's in the same house with all of this going on. I thought there was a time jump and they were somewhere else, but Matthew's just literally in the other room playing Xbox. Wild. In the cellar, he finds himself an angle grinder and we cut back to the bathroom. Cedric explains he's going to explode her face but with style. He's going to make a beatbox out of Camille's dismemberment. Which then leads to this bizarre moment in the film. I don't know what they were thinking, but here we are. That's a thing now. Ridiculous. Matthew then calls out for Camille and enters the bathroom seeing what Cedric has done. He briefly fights with the director before running off to call the police. In turn, Cedric picks up the hammer and goes to handle the situation. Cut to some time later as Cedric tells us he killed Matthew, then cut up Camille and put her into bags. After that, he started cutting up Matthew when he realized the camera had run out of battery. He places the camera above him where below we can see the chopped up remains of Matthew. He reminds himself of the guidelines he set, grabs what's left of Matthew's torso, and you guessed it, that's right, he f***s it.
Good lord. Cut to Cedric saying in every movie there's guest stars, people who you recognise but never get the leading part. Well, not in his movie. He says today you don't become famous by talent but popularity, like reality TV stars. None of them have any talent but still become famous. C'est l'exemple con de Jackass. Les teuteux s'amusent à manger leur vomi. Ouais. Ils mangent leur vomi et ils deviennent célèbres pour ça. Hey, come on, man. I know a guy who made his career filming girls doing stuff like that, and he's doing great. He says he's decided to become famous. Oh, okay, mate. How? Je vais manger du caca. Excellent choice. Cedric then gets to his knees, picks up Matthew's bowels, and squeezes the shit directly into his mouth. Isn't it interesting how disgusting eating shit seems when it's not coming out of a hot girl's asshole? Cedric then says f Harry's code in reference to Dexter as he bags up Matthew's remains. Désolé. Non mais c'était trop tentant. Cut to Cedric dropping something then approaching us as he says he just called Jonathan who's gonna pass by his house. He also says he had another idea. Horror movies have animals so he's gonna have an animal break. He's gonna get a racked for us. Oh, please don't kill the cat and f*** its corpse. Even my most loyal cult members are going to have a problem with that, mate. Oh, yeah, I know. You said that I'm cruel. He comments on cats having nine lives being false when in the background we hear a little whimper from the animal. He then goes back to it, picks up the microwave, and we thankfully cut to Cedric talking to us once more. He then says... Here we go again, undoes his belt and f***s the cat. <laughs> Me ouch! Am I right? Cut to Cedric thanking Jonathan for passing by and says the reason he called him over was so he could apologise to him on camera, which he does. He then says he thinks Jonathan's making of idea is good and that he's changed the script so Matthew is no longer the killer. He is. Cedric says he is a director killing his actors, then lists their deaths while Jonathan doesn't quite seem to grasp how much trouble he's in. Jonathan says he is the only one left and asks how he'll be killed with Cedric replying he doesn't really think about it beforehand. Cedric talks about not being able to decide where to do it and finally says they should have a drink first. Jonathan goes to get a coke out of the fridge while Cedric grabs a mallet. to Cedric waking his victim up and telling him he's gonna smash his face as a tribute to the film Misery. He calls himself an artist and says he'll make this artistic adding music to the final cut before getting in his face and telling him he knows nothing. Cedric then gets things going, breaking both of the man's feet with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Je dis que ce serait rapide et la preuve, il en reste plus qu'un. Hein, he says to Jonathan that this morning he never thought this would happen, then turns to us with the remark, destiny is a strange thing. He then gets rid of the wood, drags Jonathan so he's laying down and smashes his face with the sledgehammer. <laughs> He tells us he wanted to behead him with the hammer but only managed to smash the face so instead is improvising with the grinder again. He leans down, powers it up and blood sprays onto the walls. Cut to Cedric now covered in blood as he says this will be an instructional video on the sexual practice, the Dirty Sanchez. I'm sure most of you know this already, but a Dirty Sanchez is when you're f***ing your partner from behind, you stick your fingers up your own ass, pull out a nice piece of and then drag that across their top lip to mimic a moustache. Romantic, I know. Anyway, Cedric does this to Jonathan's severed head. Voilà, ça, c'est un Dirty Sanchez. Bon, je suis désolé, on voit pas grand chose à cause des coups de masse, mais bon, vous avez compris l'idée. He then unbuttons his pants to have sex with Jonathan's neck hole, but in a surprising show of restraint, we don't actually see much. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut pas faire pour être célèbre? Désolé.
Mais c'était trop tentant et puis... The phone rings and surprisingly it's Arnaud who says he wants to talk. Cedric tells him to come over in one hour then tells us he kept the best for last. Cut to Arnaud in the living room. Cedric asks why he wanted to see him and it seems Arnaud wants to make up. He suggests they go out for a drink but Cedric says he has cokes here then goes to get one for his guest passing bagged up body parts on the way. Arnaud asks about the movie and Cedric tells him about the new direction it's taken offering him a part. Tu fais gaffe, hein? Bah. Allez, ferme les yeux. Êtes-vous prêt à en avoir pour votre argent? Cut to Cedric getting Arnold ready in a scene that I think might be a reference to the threesome scene from A Clockwork Orange. Just the music choice and the sped up footage, I might be wrong, but you never know. He tells us he's gonna ponce his skull, then gets to work with an electric sander. <laughs> Cedric then complains about the paper not being good enough and how this is going to take hours before cutting to him securing Arnold's head to the table and then more sanding. He says he has to sign his murder, picks up this nasty looking hole driller and cuts a hole in Arnold's forehead. Which, again, he f Changing the camera angle halfway through to give us a better view. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers for that, mate. Cut to Cedric dumping everyone's remains as Raphael's song plays in the background. He marks the makeshift graves with broom tombstones when he suddenly remembers something. Raphael! Désolé, j'ai pas le temps d'expliquer là. Oh, shit. I thought that guy was gonna get away. Oh, well, never mind, eh, Raph? He then realizes he didn't f Raphael's corpse, so goes back to dig him up again, and honestly, you've got to admire the guy's dedication to the craft. He then observes one minute of silence. Cedric says as it's almost over, he thought he'd offer us one more disgusting act and we cut to him f***ing one of the severed heads. I think it's Camille. I can't say for certain, but if I was going to pick, I'd pick Camille. Regardless, as I said in the high tension review, I hope he spits in her mouth first. The mouth of a decomposing severed head is not the most hospitable home for the living man's penis. No matter how alluring that severed head's mouth may be. A very considerate parting gift there, Cedric. Thank you. Cut to him in the car and then to him in the basement as he was at the start of the film. He apologizes to anyone he may have offended and imagines all the negative reviews the film will get. He then says he didn't do this because of violence on TV or violent video games. He did it because he wanted to. He says his only regret is he won't be able to finish the editing himself so has left notes on the computer for a professional. He then gets distant for a moment before apologizing to us. He says he has talked about many things ending with the purity of cinema before telling us we'll meet again soon and ending his life. On va se revoir. Cut to more interviews with the cast as they answer the question what would they do when they're rich and famous when we fade out and the film cuts to black. But wait, there's more. We get an after credit scene where Cedric says something that isn't subtitled then chases away the film's real crew. Well, I didn't want him to f*** that dead cat, but he did, and I'm impressed. Devil's Weekend is a great spin on a well-worn story that manages to give us a three-dimensional killer with a goal, ambitious death scenes, and a few moments that shocked me, which, as you can imagine, is pretty hard these days. The story is simple enough as we follow Cedric, a wannabe director lacking the skill and tools to realise his vision. The frustration of failure combined with the lack of sleep soon get to him, causing Cedric to snap and begin killing off his cast. As a motivation for a killer to film themselves doing the murders, this seems so obvious and yet is so very original and satisfying. Normally with found footage, writers struggle to find 
reasons for the camera to always be on, but in Devil's Weekend, the reason is clear from the start, and I really appreciated that. In terms of the characters, we get a nice bunch here with a killer I couldn't wait to die and victims I genuinely felt sorry for. Cedric is a character I empathise with at first as an artist with lofty ideas, but no means to produce them. His frustration with his non-actor friends and the quality of the dailies was relatable, but it's where he starts murdering that I didn't feel bad for him anymore. I also started to get really sick of his whining at one point. The actor playing him was able to convey a spoiled brat-like quality that made hating him very easy by the end of the film. Everyone else is fine with the stand-up performances coming from Aline as the mistreated partner of Cedric and Arnaud, the handsome man Cedric is jealous of. Jonathan and Camille both came off as natural and sweet with the only bad performance coming from Matthew. I get everyone is supposed to be a non-actor, but I don't think Matthew could use that as an excuse. He was just bad bad, not acting bad. Next is the gore and they really went for it in this one. Bashed in face, severed head, torso and a cat swung multiple times into a wall. It really was a breath of fresh air as a lot of effort was put into these moments rather than just dumping a bunch of blood on someone's face. Sunken Danish. One issue I do have with it though is the inclusion of the not very convincing CGI blood. I get it as of course this is a low budget movie and it would have made certain shots a lot easier to get on the day but still. It's never a good idea and always takes me out of the experience. Aside from that though it's a great effort. Presentation wise it's a found footage slasher movie so you get the usual level of that type of work. One thing that did stick out to me though was the wonky sound of some of the dialogue especially when Cedric was holding the camera and talking. The ADR is so obvious and at times way louder than it should be which I found slightly confusing. All in all Devil's Weekend is an entertaining addition to the world of found footage serial killer movies. We get an interesting killer, fun death scenes and a cast of characters that feel like real people. While the film isn't perfect due to the budget it still does its best to offer the subgenre something new and in that respect it totally succeeds. If you're considering giving this one a shot just push through that first 30 minutes and you'll find yourself presented with a lot to enjoy. So that was my review of Devil's Weekend. What do you lot think? That first 30 minutes was rough and I was really worried nothing was going to happen but talk about a sharp turnaround. Good lord. Cedric's victims really got f***ed up in this one and I still can't believe what he did to that poor kitty cat. Speaking of which, if you want to see Cedric f*** a torso with its guts falling all over the place completely uncut and early, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. There you can find the uncut version of this review plus others with more stuff being added all the time. We got the uncut reviews, Patreon exclusive reviews, slash a comic breakdowns, commentaries coming soon, the podcast coming soon and the Discord. And all that can be yours for as little as $2 a month. You can pledge more, I really appreciate it and do, sweet holy mother of God do. I'm desperate for us to hit the next target so I can get the Patreon tattoo and we keep getting so close. Just one extra dollar from every patron already on there and would be over the top. But anyway, just go subscribe. I'll suck your dick. Metaphorically. So that's it for another week. Like the video, leave a comment and click subscribe if you haven't already. My name's John Joe Lyons and you gotta feel bad for Cedric. Making content is hard. You should see how many people have to be to murdered on a weekly basis just so I can make these videos. That being said, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. You're welcome.